We're at Lesson 10D, and this is all about decimals and fractions, and this one's going to be about using your calculator with fractions and decimals. I'm going to have links in this description to help you in case you need it. So we now know they're going to lend you a calculator that you can use for one part of the test. It's going to be probably like this Casio FX260. And most calculators use whole numbers and decimals. And you'll see it on the screen right here. If you type in 25, it'll appear as a 25 with a decimal point at the end, even though it's a whole number. It's going to have a decimal point at the right. And when working with fractions, we need to convert it to a decimal to solve it with a calculator. Now, we converted fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions in these videos, and there'll be links to those, okay? Now, remember that fractions are little division problems. So to convert a fraction to a decimal, we do 1 divided by 2. That fraction bar means divided by. We do 1 divided by 2. And we raise up our decimal point, and we see it's 0.5, okay? When we have a mixed number, we only change the fraction part to a decimal because this is going to be on the other side of the decimal point. We just worry about the 1 divided by 4, which comes out to a 0.25, but we have to remember to put that 3 back onto the front of it. It's 3 and 1 fourth, so it's 3.25, okay? You could make a mistake and forget to put that whole number back on, all right? If there's no whole number, the calculator will put a zero there. So 0.25 will come out as 0.25. It's just a placeholder, no big deal. Same thing if it's on the back end. Zeros after the last decimal place don't need to be used or entered into the calculator. 32 and 1 tenth is the same thing as 32 and 10 one hundredths. We can put as many zeros behind this last decimal place value as we want, and it's still going to be equivalent to 32.1, or 32 and 1 tenth, okay? Here's our first example. Lisa bought a car for $23,000 and made a down payment of one-fifth the cost. How much was her down payment? So it's asking us to find one-fifth of 23,000. We need to change the one-fifth to a decimal. We do one divided by five, and it equals two-tenths, 0.2, all right? So we need to multiply the 2 tenths times 23,000. We do the decimal point, the 2, the multiplication sign, and then a 2, 3, 0, 0, 0 equals, and it'll give us 4,600. Now, remember this is a dollar amount, and the calculator won't have a dollar sign in the answer. So make sure that your answer has a dollar amount, okay? So number 2 would be the correct answer. If you see it without the dollar sign, then it's the wrong answer because it's asking us for a dollar amount, okay? Don't let it trick you, all right? We also could have done 1 divided by 5 times 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, and it would calculate it as we go along. And that can be done because we're only dealing with a fraction one-fifth. Now, if it was a mixed number, we wouldn't be able to do that. We'd have to do it in two parts, okay? So because this is a fraction by itself, we could have just done it in one long calculation of entering the buttons, and we didn't have to hit an equal sign after the 1 divided by 5, like I did here. You could do it that way and get the point 2, and then do the point 2 times this. But because it's just one little one-fifth and not a mixed number, we could have just gone straight across like that, okay? And it would just slowly calculate it, as we entered it and give us the final answer of $4,600, okay? So here's what happens when we've got a mixed number. Tala put six and two-fifths gallons of gas in her car at $2.72 per gallon. How much did it cost? So it's asking us to find six and two-fifths times $2.72. We need to change the six and two-fifths to a decimal. So we ignore the six and we put 2 divided by 5, and we get a 0.4, a 4 tenths. Now we got to put that 6 back on. We can't forget about that 6. He doesn't get changed when we convert it to a decimal. He just sets off to the side and waits till we're done. So we have 6.4. Now we can do 6, decimal point 4, multiplication sign 2, decimal point 7, 2, and it's going to give us 17.408. Now, because this is a dollar amount, we need to round it to the nearest penny for the hundredths place, that zero. If you put this as the correct answer, you're going to be wrong because it's money. Money doesn't have three digits on this side of the decimal. 
This 8 is telling the 0 to go up to a 1, and then it drops off. So the correct answer would be number 4, $17.41. And this is a money problem. We have to make sure there's a dollar sign in the answer, don't we? So be careful of other answers that are very close or similar. Okay, $17.40 could fool you. That eight tenths or that eight thousandths would make this round up to a one. Okay. So make sure that you're rounding correctly. All right. We covered this already. So we're getting at the end of fractions and decimals here. All right. So you really need to understand how to do this by now. Okay. And I'm not faulting you if you don't. I'm just saying you need to retreat, regroup, and find out where you started missing information, okay? If you do get it, wow, great, let's keep going, okay? So here I've got a chart. It shows hiking trails and their length in miles. We've got the Allegheny Front Trail in West Virginia. It's 43 and 8 tenths of a mile. The Art Loeb Trail in North Carolina is 30 and 1 tenth. The Batona Trail, and I hope I'm saying that right, in New Jersey is 49 and a half miles. And the Skyline to the Sea in California that trail is 29 and a half miles. Our question is, how many more miles is the Allegheny Trail than the Skyline Trail? So it wants to know, how many more miles is this Allegheny Trail than this Skyline Trail? We have 43.8. We need to subtract 29 and a half. We have to convert Skyline's miles to a decimal so that we could do the subtraction. We can't have one as a fraction and one as a decimal. So we do that. We convert the Skyline's miles to a decimal. This half, the 29 is going to sit off to the side. This half is 1 divided by 2. We get a 0.5. We put the 29 back on. We have 29.5. Now we can subtract to find the difference. The Allegheny Trail is 43.8. We put in a 4, a 3, a decimal point, an 8. We hit the subtraction button. Then we put in the 2, the 9, the decimal point, and the 5, and equals, and find out that it's 14 and 3 tenths miles longer than Skyline, okay? You're going to have to use charts like that on the test. So remember, we can divide the numerator by the denominator to convert a fraction into a decimal. Just divide the numerator by the denominator, 1 divided by 2. But remember to include any whole numbers back into the number because we don't use them when we're converting to a decimal. They just sit off to the side. You have to remember to put it back, okay? They might trick you about that, all right? So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 127. If you do well on that, you can continue on and do the mini test for lessons 8 through 10. But be careful. It says to try doing it in 30 minutes. Really try doing it in 30 minutes to see how you would do compared to the real GED test. If you don't do it, you might be taking the actual test and say, why is this time so short? This is helping you figure out how much you can get done in 30 minutes, okay? And that's pages 128, 129, 130, 131. If you have trouble on these, don't quit. Just retreat, regroup, and attack again. Go back to the beginning of Chapter 8, because this is Lessons 8 through 10. Go back to the beginning of Chapter 8. Figure out where it went wrong, what you're having trouble with. It might just be one little thing, okay? So remember, I'm going to have links to the helpful videos in this description. And our next video is going to be the meaning of percent, 11a. In the book, lessons 11, 12, and 13 is all percentages. We get into proportions. So you have to understand these fractions and decimals before you move on, because now for the next three lessons, we're going to be doing percentages and proportions. Okay? So I hope you do well. Keep trying. And one foot in front of the other. All right? If you have any problems, just retreat, regroup, okay? No biggie. Might take an extra day out of your time, but then you'll really know it. And when you go to take the test, you'll have no problems, all right? I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next video. Bye.